So sisterpreneurs. It's just sisterpreneurs, that's us. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Sister entrepreneur. Since officially launching in 2015, they've hit multi-million dollar revenues. These two sisters started a business when they were 10 and 11 years old. Please welcome to Bomb, Bath Business creator, 17-year-old Isabel and 15-year-old Caroline Burkhaw. Hi, Hi, guys. ladies. How are you? Hi, I'm Ben. Ooh. Oh, pretty. And then you get a surprise at the end. Your parents are in the audience. Yeah. What do y'all think about all of this? It's a crazy adventure, and we're just kind of hanging on to the ride. Hi, I'm Isabel. And I'm Caroline. And we're the co-founders of Devon Bath Fizzers. Four years ago, we started this company in our basement, and last year, we exceeded over $20 million in revenue. And this is, is my hustle. hustle. Welcome to our test kitchen. Today we're gonna make a bath bomb from our book, Fizz Boom Bath, and we're making the Candy Crush bath bomb. So bath bombs are usually made of citric acid and baking soda, some fragrance oil, and a binding agent. And you can also add pigment to your bath bombs like we did here. We've already mixed all the ingredients into a bowl, and so what's left is to just assemble the bath bomb. One side of the mold you're gonna fill with some sprinkles and then you're gonna take your mix and put it in. And then with your other side, you're just gonna blend it together. Let your bath bomb sit anywhere from one to three days while it dries. And then when it's done drying, you'll have the best fizzing results when you use it in your bath. We only go to school half time because we learn a lot at the business and we have half days so that we can come and work. So this is where Isabel and I spend most of our time here in the family office. It's me, my mom and dad, Isabel obviously, and sometimes our little brother Harry will come here. So this is his desk here and here is his skate ramp area. It's pretty sick. So now we're gonna move on to the warehouse. This is Marie. <laughs> this is where all of the batches are mixed. We originally started making bath bombs in our basement. We entered a local art fair the summer of 2012 when we were 10 and 11. They had a little eight foot table. It cost them $25 to enter. They spent the entire summer making about 150 bath bombs. I thought they might not sell. That was my worst fear, that no one would buy any. But when we got to the art fair, people started coming up and asking questions and talking to them even before they were set up. And then by the end of the first day, because it's a two day fair, we had sold out of bath bombs. We actually did the art fair two years in a row. And the second year, we were approached by a local salon. The salon owner wanted to put our products in his store. Little by little, we started to get our products into more and more stores. And before we knew it, we were in so many stores that our parents had to help us complete orders. At one point, we were making 20,000 bath bombs per month out of our home. And that was a, a completely crazy time. I think we had bath bombs in every room of our home, except our bedrooms. Isabel and I would be down in our basement making bath bombs nonstop. Our fingerprints eventually wore off because we were making so many. They're back now, but that was definitely an intense time in bath bomb history. Flash forward to today, we have over 200 employees during our peak season. And in our busiest times, we make over a million bath bombs a month. To the photo room we go. Usually this is where we'll come to photograph all of our ideas for social media. Social media is actually one of the most important marketing platforms we use. And we also realized that we should also be able to inspire people. From the very beginning, giving back was something that was really important to us. So that's where the idea of the Earth Bomb came up. Mm -hmm. And so with the Earth Bomb, we donate proceeds towards different organizations that help clean up the oceans. If you have some influence in this world, you know, there's a lot going on and everyone's trying to get their message across. So if you even have a little bit of influence, I think it's important to use it for good. I honestly love my job, but it can be kind of hard sometimes because people assume things about you that maybe aren't true. I've had groups of kids come up to me before at school and say, oh, you're a multimillionaire, what's that like? And I'm like, just because 
you see an article that says my business is worth this much, that doesn't necessarily mean I myself can like be a baller and like have all this cash flow. You um, have to reinvest in the company and pay your employees and pay your suppliers. Mm -hmm. There's so many other expenses. Yeah. And I think people don't really realize that, especially in high school. We're kind of living a double life. You know, we go to school and we have school friends and then we come to the office and it's kind of weird because then we're in a different position of maybe authority or a different age group. You have to make self-care a priority and you have to learn how to balance your life. And there's really no good way to tell you how to do that. Ice skating, take one. So when we were a little younger, we used to skate five to six days a week. Since the business started, we kind of had to slow things down a bit, but we still try to make time to skate. We get in arguments all the time, but we know that we have each other's backs. When we're not having arguments, we're having a lot of fun. <laughs> Figure skaters are known to not have the same fear receptors as most people. When we started our business, we like to say that we were kind of fearless, and maybe that's because we're figure skaters and we weren't scared of falling, so then we weren't scared of failing with our business. So, how was everyone's day? I think we saw each other for most of it. <laughs> our parents have been so incredibly supportive throughout this whole thing. Without a doubt, we would not be where we are without them. This business has allowed us to spend so much time together and just to experience their professional growth has been really cool. If I could give a piece of advice to someone my age, if you have anything you want to start, just do it. Don't wait. If you're really passionate about it, it'll be worth it. My top piece of advice would be you have to find a sense of fearlessness because if you're always afraid that things are going to go wrong, your business isn't going to succeed. In 20 years, I think Devam is going to be international and ruling the world. <laughs> One bath at a time. Exactly. <laughs>